Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 151, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi. Great to see you again, Marwa. Great to see you, too. So, uh, so uh, occasionally we give tips that because of new features within Apex or because we just did something wrong or we've discovered a better way. Um, we, we need to update those tips. So today we're going to update three tips that we've done in the past uh, with new information, or may, in one of the case, we're just going to augment the tip. But, uh, but I think we can do all three of these in five minutes uh, and then uh, stick around because I have a special Apex Instant cooking tip uh, uh, right. upon request. Uh, so uh, Marwa, let's jump right in. Uh, what's our first tip? Yes, our first tip is about our 148 session. And in that Apex Instant Tip session, we presented a way to get a checksum for a value. Oop. And I think we're doing fasted search. Or we do, oh, checksum. Okay, yes, you're right, checksum. Yes. Okay, so we used this function, AIT get checksum. And we used um, the aura hash function to get a hash. Ah. Now there is a better way to do it. Yes. Uh, exactly right. So aura hash, we, and the, the thing here is you had to manage making your own salt. And we threw, went through that tip and create your own salt and store it in a, uh, an application item and all of those kinds of things. You don't need to do any of that. It was silly. Uh, I even knew the better way. I've used the better way, but for whatever reason, I wasn't thinking of it when, when I did that tip. The better way is apexutil.get hash. I'm going to turn on our timer because we've cheated already. Um, this right here, it has a salt. It has the ability, ability to do a session-based salt automatically. Every time Apex creates a new session in the Apex session table, they have a salt that they randomly generate and then they use it here. This is what you want to use, Apex Util Get Hash. If you use this consistently throughout your application, you don't even need your own function. You don't need your own salt. It does everything. You can tell it by default, the salt is true. Your session will get a unique value, a, a unique checksum. Nobody else will get that same checksum. So, exactly. So much That's easier. A so a couple of folks asked me to publish my algorithm and so forth. I should have I should have just used Apex Util get hash. So super easy. That's the one to use if you're good for everyone going forward. All right. The next one was the one I was thinking we were starting with. Um, and I think that was episode, I think this was 148. Yeah. This one was 148 and fasted search was 146. 146. Okay. So this one, 146, we described how to um, create a date range fasted search because Apex doesn't support a facet of a, a range with a facet of type date, right? Um, type date, right. And to do that, we created two page items and they had the type of date pickers and we created a button we named it go we added a dynamic action on that button to um, submit the values of the end date and start date to the classic report and refresh the region now simply if we take a look at the page designer we can create a facet with type range type range and with data type, data date, type date, it is possible now to select and it just works. Data type. It's yeah. exactly. So you don't need, we had these extra items, this extra, you don't need any of this stuff. We had these three things. We had a dynamic action. We had some CSS. You could do it in five minutes. And still, if you're not on 24.2 yet, you can still use this method. But once you get to 24.2, you don't need any of that. Throw it away. Boom. Just uh, put it right in here and it works. Um, it does. Our method still works, though, if you have some other kind of UI control that you want that's not supported, right? If you if you need, um, I don't even know, if you need a map or something, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. The other method works for controls you can't do, but specifically for dates, no need anymore. Exactly. Right. Update number three. This one's a little bit trickier, um, and it's related to multilingual applications. Um, oh, Michelle says 24.1. Uh, I guess it's 24.1 that has it, not 24.2. Um, thanks for all the, um, the, the feedback. Yeah, 24.1. So uh, 
multilingual apps. You can see this is a multilingual app. If I change from English to Spanish, it changes. Um, you know, this becomes contraseña. This says iniciar sesión, idioma at the top. English is in English. My augment to our tip uh, in episode 53 is if and only if when, when, when you are querying Apex metadata views, you don't want to use app ID. Or in the habit of using app ID, app ID is the right place, the right thing to use everywhere else. But when you're querying the metadata views, you want to use app translation ID. The reason is this. In English, we have the same ID for app ID and app translation ID. But when we switch to Spanish, app ID remains the primary language application ID. App translation ID becomes whatever your translated application is. So if you want to get idioma, nombre de usuario, contraseña, you need to, to make the change and you need to have it be app translation ID, not app ID. Um, right. And that's it. That's our, uh, that's our five minutes. Uh, right. And well within time. Um, do you ever do multilingual apps, Marwa? Um, each time I work on such applications, I always forget to see them publish. Do you know after each change we make, we have to see and publish to see the changes. That's exactly, yeah, it is every time. You have to do the seed and publish, seed and publish, seed and publish. And uh, I often forget, um, in fact, I've made a change in this one already and neglected to seed and publish it, but um, there you have it. Um, so that is how you do, uh, that's how you query uh, metadata views. Make sure you use app translation ID. Um, I think I have a blog post about this somewhere, but if I don't, I will make sure I, I do one. All right. so. That's our five minutes. We made it well within the time. Uh, probably, Great. Yeah. Uh, and so if you just came for the five minutes and you don't want my cooking tip, uh, beat it. Do all the things, like, subscribe, all that. Um, but my cooking tip, because we were asked, right? The, right. Last week we were, we were told that our, our cheese folding technique was, was top notch. Um, I'm going to pass along an Apex instant cooking tip uh, this is courtesy of my son. Um, it's actually maybe not an instant tip because it takes longer than your average uh, method, but it's about reheating pizza. Do you like pizza, Marwa? I love pizza. Yeah, I yeah. love it. Right. And you know, the truth is any leftover pizza is good, is good uh, pizza. Thanks, Brian. Uh, um, any leftover pizza is good pizza. I even like it cold right out of the fridge. But if you're looking for like recreating that pizza that you had the night before. This is the method to reheat the pizza. So I'm gonna show, show my screen. This is what you do, I'll run it through quickly. Um, in a large pan with a tight fitting lid, um, place the pizza in the pan and turn to medium high to cook. And you leave it like that for like three to four minutes and it heats up in there. Then the pizza is very, very hot and the, the crust is, is starting to relax a little bit. Um, pour in a little bit of water about a tablespoon and cover it, right? Hopefully with a glass lid so you can see what's going on and wait for that, that water to bubble up and then open the lid, do it again. A little bit, maybe, maybe a teaspoon, not a tablespoon. Cover it up again, mm. let it bubble, bubble up. Do that two or three times, then take the lid off um, and you know you might leave, it, leave the pizza in just a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading Michelle's comment. <laughs> All right, but this is it. Here you go, Michelle. This is for you. These two lines are for you. <laughs> so you can grumble about it all you want, Michelle, but when you eat that pizza, heat it up this way, you'll know the results are worth it. So thanks. You set me up for that, Michelle. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's our instant cooking tip of the day. We will put a link to this blog post. Um, we will put a link to this blog post in the show notes so you can just click on it. Um, you have to scroll through um, a short story. You have, to, you have a fair amount to read to get to this tip. But um, there we have it, uh, a tip from my son on how to reheat your pizza. A great one. A little bit longer, but 
It's still a great one. <laughs> all right. Well, do all the things. If you like this tip, like this tip. Uh, tell your mom about the show. Send letters to your friends. Let everybody know. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.